So we're going to look at all 10 of these, or actually there's 12, right? All 12 of these problems and figure out if the two triangles are congruent. So if the answer is no, then you're done. They're just not congruent. If the answer is yes, you are going to state how you know. What I mean by that is which of the five methods work. So is it side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, 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 side, or hypotenuse leg? Those are the five choices we had. Now we're going to start with some simple ones that are maybe more obvious, and then we're going to work toward away some more challenging ones. Um, so like if it's congruent, we just put yes. And then, and then tell me the method. Like that's all I have to do? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if we look at the first one, how many things in general do I always need to know to prove triangles congruent? Three. Three, right? We either need like three sides, three, you know, angle, side, angle, two angles, and a sides, etc. Hypotenuse leg, technically you still need three because you have to have a right angle and then you have to have a hypotenuse in leg. So it's always three. So on this one, again, I'm going to maybe go slow to make sure everybody's got this. But what does um, this angle, over, what does this represent over here? Angle. An angle. Again, we're going to try to go for the obvious right now. And like I said, if you got this, go faster than me. What is the two tick marks here represent? Side. Side. So this is? Angle. angle. Now, one thing you have to be careful of. Sometimes it doesn't go in the same order in the other picture. So you have to be careful. If they don't match, if it's not angle, side, angle of both pictures, you can't say it's angle, side, angle. And the other one, hopefully it's obvious to you, you have an angle, a side, and an angle. So these two triangles, yes, are congruent, and my method is angle, side, angle. That's all you have to do. They're not meant to be difficult, but as we get further into the worksheet here, we're going to talk about things that you can add to the picture if you don't already know. Okay, so if we look at number two. So looking at the picture, based on what we know, the two arc marks here mean angle. The right angle symbol means an angle. The three arc marks mean angle. Did we have one that worked that said angle, angle, angle? Yes. No. Did that one work? No, we didn't. That was under the false category, right? So are these two triangles congruent? No. So again, that's why we're going through these together. When we're finished with this, you'll have one you're going to do on your own. So again, if you know what you're doing, awesome. Work ahead of me here. So now on this one, again, we always said you had to know three pairs of parts congruent to make this work. So in this particular, the two tick marks represent a side. The three tick marks represent a side as well. But we don't have one that just goes SS, right? We always have to have three things. So if you only have two things marked in the picture, it's not automatically a no. Then you have to stop and think, okay, is there anything I can actually add to the picture that could work? So for example, remember yesterday we talked about the bow tie picture? This is one of those bow tie pictures. Something you can add to the picture are vertical angles because we know from when we dealt with parallel lines, we do know that vertical angles are congruent. That was one of our pairs of angles we came across. So if you have vertical angles in the picture, that's something extra you can add. That makes sense. So these two, an arc mark again means angle. So these two triangles, yes, are congruent by side, angle, side. Notice the angle is formed by the two congruent sides. So again, just because you only have two things marked in the picture does not automatically mean no. See if you can add something. Like vertical angles is something you can add. You can't just randomly add something to the picture. But if you have vertical angles in the picture, you can add those. Okay. So if we continue on here with number four, if I get this to number four, okay. So again, thinking about what's marked in the picture already. One tick mark represents a side. So we have two, a pair of sides that are congruent. An arc mark indicates a pair of angles are congruent. So again, we said we always have to know three things. Well, right now, we only know two from each triangle, a side and an angle. But again, before you put no, you want to stop and think, is there anything we can add to the picture? Now, yesterday, on some of them, we drew a picture where the two triangles butted up against each other. So if you look at this picture, these two triangles butt up against each other in this blue side that I traced, right? So since this particular side is the same length in both triangles, it butts up into, against each other, that's something we can add to the picture. If they share a side... 
Again, that's something we can add to the picture. So these two triangles, since tick marks again represent a side, these two triangles would yes be congruent. My method is going to be side angle side again. So again, things you can add to the picture are vertical angles. Things you can add to the picture or if, or if they butt up and share a side, you can add that. Those are two things you can always add to the picture if you don't have enough information. So some of them, like you said, are kind of obvious what they are, and some of them you maybe have to take that extra step and add something extra. Okay, number five. Couple things to keep in mind from what you know about things we've covered before. If we have a right angle on the bottom, that also means we have a right angle on the top. Would everybody agree to that? Because that makes a straight angle. 180 minus 90 is still 90 no matter how you look at it. So they are right triangles. So remember, we could have the possibility of hypotenuse leg. So what's marked in the picture? This is actually the hypotenuse of each triangle. So again, I have a right angle and I have a hypotenuse. I still need something else. But again, notice something we said you could add to the picture is if they share a side, these two triangles butt up against each other. So we could state that this segment is congruent to itself. That's again your reflexive property. So this one, these two triangles, yes, are congruent. It's going to be HL because the one they share is the leg. So again, I'll try to get a variety of problems here for you so you can see things you can add to the picture and a variety of our methods. Because again, they can be one of the five. Okay, so if we continue on to number six, this one's an obvious one, hopefully for you. If you're looking at it, there nobody's butting up against the other one, and there's no vertical angles in the picture. So if they're separate, you just look at them the way they are. So again, one tick mark represents a side. Two tick marks, again, represents a side. Three tick marks, again, represents a side. So these two triangles, yes, are congruent by side, side, side. That one's an obvious one. So they don't necessarily go in order of difficulty. Now again, you don't have to put the S's in the picture like I did here. If that helps, awesome. If not, no big deal. But you do have to tell me the method in the end. Okay, number seven. So this one. Again, looking at the picture, what's marked? I have two tick marks represents a side. An arc mark represents an angle. So right now, looking at the two triangles, I only have one thing marked in each picture, or two things marked in each picture. That's not enough. So then I stop and think, OK, can I actually add anything to the picture? Again, in this one, we have vertical angles. And vertical angles, anytime you have that bow tie type of picture, you can always add vertical angles to your picture. So again, anytime I have arc marks, I've got A's. Now, Here's the question for some of you. So most of you are probably thinking right now, yes, they are congruent. The question is, I have two A's and an S. So is it AAS or is it ASA? So is the side that we know that's congruent between the two angles? It's AAS. Because again, the side here is not between your two angles. So your S can't be between your two A's. Okay. Let's continue on then. Like I said, these are not long problems, but it helps if we can talk them through so that you can figure them out hopefully on your own. So if we look at number eight, again, we start off with what's marked on the picture. So we have two angles marked in each triangle. So we know if it works, it's going to have to be two, one with two A's in it, either ASA or AAS. Now, again, we always need to know three pairs of parts are congruent. We only have two in each. But, again, notice in these two triangles, they butt up against each other in the middle there. So that's something we can add to the picture. That segment is congruent to itself by the reflexive property. So this one, yes, the triangles are congruent. And, again, notice the side is between the two angles. So my method is going to be ASA. Everybody feel like you're starting to get the hang of this? Some of the pictures are more obvious than others to figure out. Sometimes, like you can see on some of them, we've had to add something to the picture. Okay, a few more. So number nine, again, what's originally marked? If we look at the picture, 
We've got two sides in each triangle. So again, we always have to have three pairs of parts congruent. So in this one, again, notice they share a side down the middle. So again, that's something I can add to the picture. Anytime they butt up against each other, that's something you can add. So these two triangles, yes, are congruent. My method is going to be side, side, side. So again, you can add vertical angles to the picture. You can add a common side if they butt up against each other. Those are two things you can always add to the picture if need be. Okay, number 10. I've got right angles in the picture again. Okay, notice that I have a leg marked in each one. We got two tick marks on each part here. And again, they butt up against each other in the middle. So I can say that side is congruent to itself by reflexive. Now, in general, without even thinking about this, this would be like angle side side, right? Does angle side side work in general? No, but it works if it's a right triangle. In a right triangle, we call this hypotenuse leg. So in this picture, yes, the triangles are congruent. My method is HL, hypotenuse leg. If you're thinking in your head it's angle side side, that's not a method, but again, if it's a right triangle, it does work, we call it hypotenuse leg. Okay. Two more. This one. So again, notice we have two sides in each triangle. Do they have vertical angles? Okay, so do they have vertical angles? No. Do they butt up against each other and share a side? No. No, so can I add anything to the picture? No. So nope. They're not congruent. You can only add something extra if there's vertical angles or if they butt up against each other and share a side. You can't just randomly say, oh, I think these two are congruent. Again, it's only if they share a side, like they butt up against each other, or if you have vertical angles. Okay, so the last one, number 12. So again, what's marked on the picture? We have an angle, and we have another angle, and there's not one that's just AA. But notice in this picture, they do butt up against each other. So I can mark that as a common side. Now this one is going to be angle, angle, side, because this side is not the side between the two angles. Bless you. OK, 